Thank you very much. I think I win the award for the world's longest intro. Sorry, I didn't realize they were going to read the whole thing. So my talk today is going to be crowdfunding Alaska's future. <clears throat> when I heard that the, uh, the topic for this, uh, this TED talk was going to be collaboration, creativity, and interconnectedness, I, I couldn't have been more excited. I, I think that this is the perfect time to talk about this. Uh, it's the perfect time because the technology and the ability to connect and the things that you can collaborate on have never been easier, have never been more ubiquitous, but also because I feel that both in Alaska and outside of Alaska, we are at a cro oh, crossroads. Sorry, the back one's a little slower than the front one. Um, but it's not, it's not a nice crossroad like this, a left and right choice, a, a binary decision. It's more something like this, right? I mean, it's extraordinarily complicated. There's a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of different ways that we could go. And it's, it's tied to a variety of different things. It's tied to drop in federal funding, you know, uncertainty about oil revenues. Where are we going to be in 20, 30, 50 years? Is there going to be anybody left? How do we find the solution to these problems? Right? And the old model, the previous way of doing things was you'd have a few leaders step up and say, all right, we know which way to go. We're going to show you the direction. And they point the way, and everybody either follows them or laughs at them and finds a different leader, right? And it works, but I think we can do better. I think that there are techniques and tools out there right now that allow us to become more active participants in our own future, in our own destiny. We can, not to get too histrionic about it, be the change we want to see in our community. We can make what we want, we can make the community that we want to live, live in a reality. And it's not that hard, it doesn't involve a lot of risk, it basically involves spreading the work around, spreading the, the cost around, spreading the uh, intellectual lift that's required across an entire community instead of relying on a few heavy lifters. Now, one of the ways to do that is crowdfunding. And crowdfunding comes in three different flavors. Uh, there's crowdfunded loans, there's crowdfunded uh, equity-based projects, and then there's reward-based projects like Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Crowdfunded loans, uh, Kiva Zip uh, is an is a example of that. Basically, people get together and uh, you put up a project online and you can, depending on whether or not people like your project, they kick in a little bit of money. Over a 12 to 18 month period, you end up paying them back 0% APR. There's some for-profit loan sites, but some of the rates they charge get a, little, get a little insane. But that's the basic principle, right? I mean, you get your money back. You're not going to make any money, but you, know, you get to do something solid for somebody and you know, grow your community that way. It's a great program, but it's usually smaller amounts. Kiva Zip, uh, the limitation on the first, uh, the first loan that you can get is about $5,000. And there's been an example of that. There's one uh, Alaskan company, Alaska Dynamics, Teo Graber, a uh, fantastic guy, great maker. If you haven't met him, you, you really should. He came up with a, uh, a wood stove insert <coughs> that uh, has an auto actuating catalytic converter, thermoelectric generators. It generates electricity, cleans the smoke as it goes, and it's so easy even I can install it. So that's telling you something. Uh, he, he raised $5,000 in under a month, over half of it from out of state, and he's using it to build a prototype. And with that prototype, he's going to go out and raise money, and he's already generated interest from uh, people interested in Fairbanks and, and across, uh, across the state that uh, take the emissions standards that uh, have, you've probably heard about recently seriously. So the second round is uh, equity-based crowdfunding. A lot of that uh, you may have heard from the JOBS Act that was passed back in late 2011, early 2012. It's basically what it sounds like. Uh, instead of the loan uh, program where you, you get paid back with or without interest, this one, you're actually buying a small piece of a company. It's like uh, being allowed to be an IP, uh, you know, getting into on an IPO without being an accredited investor, which has some serious financial requirements to it, right? So people like you and I can go on and we can say, wow, I really like this company. I think it's going to do great. I'm going to kick in 100, 500, whatever. And I'm going to get a piece of the company in the return. I'm granted a small piece, but, you know, the SEC is still working on the regulations on that. There's a few international models, but realistically, I don't think this is the best use of crowdfunding. I think that the best use of crowdfunding is the rewards-based model. And this is the one where you, you don't get your money back and you don't make any money off of it. But the people that put up the projects do give you something, right? And uh, originally it was started around 2007. And back in 2007, 2008, the bottom fell out of the global market and the first thing that usually dries up in a situation like that is discretionary spending like art funding. Doesn't mean that artists still don't want to make art, doesn't mean that people still don't want to see art or, or, or participate in art projects, but there just isn't the, the nonprofit or government funding or, or however you get funded for it. 
And so what Kickstarter and Indiegogo realized was that, well, institutions may not have the money, but people still have some money. I mean, they may not have a lot of money, but generally speaking, everyone has 10, 20, 30, 50 dollars that they can kick in on a project that they really are involved in and, and passionate about. So they created a site, these two sites, <clears throat> and you put your project up there and you, you say, I need, in the terms of Kickstarter, you say, I need X amount of dollars. And if you get enough people to kick in for that amount of money, then you get the money and they get whatever rewards you promised them in the time frame that you gave. Indiegogo is more of a keep what you get model, so you say I need $10,000, if you only raise five, you get the five, but they charge you more in fees. And it's worked phenomenally well. Uh, I think in 2012, there were uh, almost $300 million raised through Kickstarter alone. Indiegogo is a little difficult, a little more difficult to track. They don't, uh, they aren't as good about putting out their numbers, but the activity there seems pretty similar. So it's not outside the realm of possibility to believe that they are doing as well, if not better. Over half of the total amount of money Kickstarter has raised to date has been for film projects. So art is still a strong component. But what got interesting is a few years after they, they were created, the economic downturn was still going on, money was getting even tighter, and now all of a sudden, Business financing was falling off. Startups, entrepreneurs, software uh, programmers, things like that that have products that are high risk but have you know, decent returns, realized that you know, fundamentally, there's not a whole heck of a lot of difference between my product and a CD or a film or an art project in general. And these guys are doing fantastically this way. Why can't we take advantage of this opportunity to basically crowdfund our businesses? So they did, they got online and <clears throat> did phenomenally well, much better than anyone thought. I mean, traditional wisdom would say, who's going to forward fund a business? You're not getting any money back. There's no product to buy right away, right? It's not a store. You're just buying into a concept that apparently can't get funded through traditional means, which is the usual vetting process. This is a terrible idea, but it wasn't. People funded phenomenal amounts of money to these projects in some cases. Highest funded Kickstarter to date, $11 million for the Pebble Watch. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's been fairly popular. Several people probably bought one. It's basically a, uh, a design project that integrates a, an iPod Nano. You know, it's not groundbreaking. I mean, it was, it, it's, it's inventive, it's innovative, but you know, they weren't reinventing the wheel. But they raised $11 million. Blew past their goals by, you know, I think, $10.9 million or so. <laughs> they did phenomenally well. And it shocked them, right? They weren't prepared. They didn't put a limit on how many of these things they would sell. They thought, well, we're gonna sell a couple hundred, couple thousand, it's gonna be great if we get up to 10,000. Holy moly, we just sold like tens of thousands of these. Our logistics supply chain isn't gonna work. So they had to go back and they had to figure it out, but eventually they launched, the product, sh uh, the product shipped, and it's doing great, right? Debt-free, equity-free to start up, and you have a built-in customer base. Why is that important, right? This isn't, you know, all right, fine, I found a new form of financing, that's, that's all well and good, but it's not really the key part of this. The key part of this is the people you see up there, right? Each one of these people has seen your product and they have said, this is important to me. It may not be mass marketable. It may not be you know, something that you're gonna see on, on Walmart shelves or something like that, but it's something that I wanna see. It's something that's important to me. It's something that I think adds value to uh, an industry or my community or something like that. And a good example of that is a project that's currently up on Kickstarter called Pop Cycle. Now Pop Cycle, is run by a, a, a fantastic young lady named Kate. She's in the audience today, I think. And her concept is very simple. She takes locally sourced fruit and berries and, and, and other wonderful things that Alaskans grow in, in mass quantities. She turns them into delicious popsicles, puts them in this phenomenal little bicycle, tricycle thing, and pedals them all around downtown, selling them to, uh, to locals and tourists who are very happy to get a delicious treat. So like any good businesswoman, she's, uh, she's looked at her capacity to grow, and she's realized that renting space in a commercial kitchen isn't cutting it anymore. She can't really grow any farther than this. She has to make these things in the wee small hours of the morning and then wake up and pedal for who knows how long. I, I certainly couldn't do it. And so now she wants to raise money to do uh, her own little commercial kitchen. And she's doing fairly well. I think the last time I saw her, her page, it was somewhere around $10,000. She's very close to her goal. And it's... It's, what's interesting about this is it's not gonna be a huge economic driver, right? We're not creating a huge popsicle industry in Alaska. This isn't gonna be a, a mass manufactured popsicle factory. That's not why I'm gonna kick in on this. But I kicked in on this because I thought, this is a cool project. And it's done by a cool person. And I want this kind of thing in my community. I wanna see Kate pedaling around downtown, selling delicious treats to people in my community. I think this adds value. 
I don't think it's gonna, you know, I'm not gonna get a lot of financial return. What I am gonna get, though, is Popsicle, <laughs> right? And that's enough for me. That's a, that was enough for me to kick in, you know, not a whole lot of money, but I think, you know, 25, 50 bucks, why not? And apparently, you know, $10,000 worth of other people agree with me. It's a great way to vet your product. It's a great way to vet your value to a community. It's a great way to find out if what you're doing has fans. And those fans give you money, and when your product shows up at the door, right, or in this case, on the park strip or on the coastal trail, I get that popsicle. It's not just a popsicle. It's not just a CD. It's not just a film. It's a story. It's a story that I helped write. It's a story that I helped create. It's something that I gave to my community and I participated in. And I'm gonna give them feedback. I'm gonna bore them to death with ideas for popsicle names and popsicle flavors. It's gonna be terrible. <laughs> Worst thing Kate ever did was call attention to herself for me. And I don't think I'm gonna be alone. And hopefully I won't be, because that's the value here. It's not the money. There's a lot of money in Alaska. Every year, PFD dumps who knows how many millions of dollars into the economy and basically play money, right? Now imagine if you took $25 from each of those PFDs and put it towards something like this. It's one of the largest investment funds in the world, right? You can fund anything that way, literally anything. And you should, you should. You should find things that add value to the community for you, and you should fund them because you are responsible for creating the community that you want to live in. It's not okay anymore to sit back and wait for people to do it for you. Because they're not any good at it. Holy moly. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it was either that or the hook. <laughs> this is much nicer. So, <laughs> how'd your TED talk go? Great till they turned the lights on me. Uh, so, <laughs> That's all right. So, so anyway, it's, it's not enough anymore to wait for people to take the lead, right? It's not enough for, for, for waiting for one person to have an idea and we all run with it because, well, frankly, we can't be bothered. It's so hard to figure out how to do something in the community. It's so hard to start a business. It's so hard to go out and pedal all day and sell popsicles to strangers. All right, that one is kind of hard. That was a bad example. But, you know, generally speaking, it's not anymore. We, that, that's, it's not true anymore. You can get online, you can start a business for nothing. You can get legal Zoom. you can incorporate, you don't have to hire a lawyer anymore. Creative Commons copyright, you don't have to pay for a copyright attorney anymore. You can fund your business from crowdfunding, get a startup, you don't have to put your house up anymore, you don't have to put your retirement up anymore. The only thing you have to do is convince people in your community that what you're doing has value. And that's important because <laughs> A lot of them are going to say no, right? <laughs> a lot of them are going, to say, are going to look at what you're doing and they're going to say, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> what were you thinking? But that's okay. You don't get to win all the time. You learn more from failing than you do from winning. I believe that. I firmly believe that. And so if you're interested in doing these types of projects, if you're interested in a business project, a film project, an art project, anything, you want to build a park, put it up there and see if it, see if it sticks. See if anybody else agrees with you, right? See if there's value to what you're doing, and that will tell you if you're on the right path. And it will also give you feedback on how to do something differently next time, right? Now, here's, here's the interesting part. Every time I try to sell ideas like this to people, right, they tell me, it can't be done here. It can't be done in Alaska. This is Alaska. We don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> we can't do that kind of stuff. You should have heard the hoops I had to jump in to sell, the concept of a hackathon. People thought I was trying to convince them to let me break into their system. It was ridiculous. It didn't work. So my favorite one, my favorite one to date, the, the reason we can't do this kind of stuff here, <clears throat> two people standing in Alaska, me and somebody else, they look at me and they said, we can't do that here. All the, all the best and brightest people have left. <laughs> Why are we still here? <laughs> I didn't get the memo. It was like there was a Mensa rapture and we're all the ones left behind. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. And it's not true. It's so not true. If the speakers today haven't proved it to you, give me 10 minutes after this, after this talk. Give me 10 minutes and I will point out 20 people in that lobby that are doing things that will blow your mind. It will blow your mind. We're doing drone research. We're doing methane clathrate research. We're doing all sorts of amazing things with fish that I don't understand. <laughs> But I know they're delicious. 
So I need you to stop channeling this. And I need you to start channeling this. <laughs> this is Alaska, right? Look at these people. They're standing in negative 38 degree Fahrenheit weather in, you, in Fairbanks, in their bikinis. These people found a caribou on the park strip in their bikinis. <laughs> what were they doing there? I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> this is who we were founded by, right? <laughs> These are the direct descendants of the lunatics that came to Alaska, saw that it was three feet deep in ice and said, yeah, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Dark all the time, I need to get me some of this. <laughs> Nobody here, sweet. <laughs> people like that can do anything. We've already proved it. We've already proven it. We've been here forever. If crazy people couldn't make stuff happen, we would have left a long time ago. So I need you to channel your inner Alaskan. I need you to channel your inner crazy person. I need you to channel your creativity and your love of a community. I need you to help me and help yourselves figure out how to navigate that crossroads. Not the two left or right. Anybody can do that. The crazy looking noodle one. Because that's what we've got, right? We have so many options, so many different possibilities that no small group of people will ever be able to navigate all those roads. But if we outsource it to all of you, if you drive the debate instead of being driven, then yes, we can. <laughs> we can do it, right? I believe it. I just need you to believe it. And more importantly, I need you to convince other people to believe it. Because Alaska suffers from one of the craziest self-esteem problems I've ever seen in my life. We've fallen prey to a national media blitz that has convinced us that we are a bunch of handout grubbing hillbillies. And it's not true. It's not true. We are a do-it-yourself, amazing community of innovators, inventors, and community-minded people that can do dang near anything if we work together. And the technology today has, it has made it so easy that any excuses you may have had, any excuses, are completely invalid. Seriously. If you have an idea, kickstart it. If you have an idea, put it up somewhere. Get people involved. If it doesn't work, that's okay. It really doesn't matter. The fact is you did it, and you found people that believed in you, and you made the effort. Let's do this. Let's crowdfund Alaska. <laughs>